What's going on everybody? Starting a couple of minutes early. Sorry for the late start tonight. Normally we've been starting this at 6 p.m. Pacific time today, 7.15. Apologize for that. Was out hiking with tiny trucks today and it just, it didn't end up getting, I didn't end up getting home until late and by the time I got cleaned up and all that, pushed our start time back. But tonight is 3D printing Sunday, formerly known STL Sunday. Basically what the point of this live series is, is that we take a project, whatever we're trying for that evening, we design it from start to finish in a CAD software. For this demonstration, we use Fusion 360 because you can get it for free in many countries. I've linked to the software in the description below. You can click on that link and go find uh, this software yourself runs on most computers. You don't need anything too powerful. It's pretty efficient software. It works really well. That's the point of what we're doing. Most of what we're designing is designed to be 3D printed. So we take that into consideration while going through the process and designing in ways that make the parts easily oriented for 3D printing or tolerances with 3D printing in mind. Uh, if you were going to be machining these parts, you may design a little bit differently. So that's some of the reasoning behind some of the things that we do. So with that, thanks for joining. We'll see where everyone's coming in at. Michael Wright, we are going to have to to put you in timeout for a while until you stop spam. So um, with that, what's going on, everybody? Thanks again for joining in. See where everyone's coming from. Uh, was the spot good? It ended up not being good. It ended up being a, uh, a very difficult spot to get to, very overgrown. We ended up hiking through a lot of brush that was nasty and just tore us up. So we only ended up doing like three miles and it was just, but it was a great Jeep ride up there. Some beautiful terrain. So what's going on everybody? Florida, Pennsylvania, Argentina, Charleston, South Carolina, Oregon, North Carolina, KC, Vancouver, Canada, New York. Awesome. Um, tonight, last week, we kind of discussed a little bit about a working on a multi-week project. And, you know, the, the project we had talked about was a trailer to pull behind a scale truck. And I think that's something that we still want to, I, I want to move forward on. Tonight, maybe we don't go as late, so maybe it's a great time to uh, to start that. And we'll try and update, we'll upload the parts that we work on every week. So you can print them and, you know, make progress on things that you like and you know go from there it's possibly something we can do and i think we can also print items that or design items for it that maybe may work for multiple other situations as well so that's that's what we're kind of looking at more people checking in maine pennsylvania socal nicole yeah we're both the allergy things kind of kicking us both but we're we're getting there <laughs> in the bed of my chevy apache in michigan nice uh, live from my home. How was the incline? It was, it was, uh, it was just tough to get anywhere out there. <laughs> Got three new rolls of filament. Let's go. <laughs> Missouri. I think you should 3d print a hydraulic steering ram. That may be, that may be a hard thing to do. I mean, um, where did you go or around? Um, we were up in the Jackson Lake, Jackson Meadows Reservoir area. So that was where we were trying dishwasher today. Just, we just rammed out, round out all of the possible uh, appliances. <laughs> so let's switch over to the fusion view. So this was what we had from last week. We had pulled some general dimensions off one of the uh, websites for travel trailers, and we just kind of made a, a basic sketch. Um, you know, this right here, like we would have to kind of break this up into a couple of pieces possibly to print on some printers. And I think we can do that. So we can, you know, we can make some concessions for that type of thing and, and really try and make things more. Let's see, let me, what trailers were we looking at? I can't remember the name of the, uh, off-road trailers we were uh let's oh yeah wasn't it like terra something or terra drop 
Terra Drop instead of Teardrop. Terra Drop Alpha. Yeah, I think this is kind of along the lines of what we're looking at. Trailer like that. I like the looks of that. I think that that's, that's something that would make a, a, a good project for, for this, giving us some, some options. We'll see what, we'll see. I think if you guys are into this, I think we're going to kind of go down this path. Uh, we'll see what, you know, everyone's saying waffle iron. Ooh. Uh, I need a printed Traeger for my trail set. Need to decide on the axle you plan on using so the width is correct. Uh, you know, that's something that's something to think about, you know, whether we look at using an axle or we'd look at basically making everything printable. I do like the idea of making everything printable or being able to swap in an axle. It allows us to, you know, some people don't want to buy the parts and I get that. Some, you know, there's going to be some parts that we're going to have to assume people are going to have to buy. But if we try and make it as, you know, as easy as possible, then we can have it. So you can basically print it if you want to something that's kind of a very easy static or not static, but light duty, you know, model, uh, then great, you know, but if you want something that you think you're going to beat on in the trail, then maybe, you know, maybe it's still going to work if we design things well, uh, you know, especially if we, we look at possibly different all kinds of different things we could do. I think there's there's enough there. You know, the, the easy thing would even be going to a leaf spring axle. Like if we went with a, a uh, to my, uh, what's, I guess, the, what's the semi front axle? You know, if we went with a, with one of these type of axles, you know, you've got an, an easy spindle style axle with some mounting points that technically you could probably make work for either linked or uh, leaf spring. But honestly, leaf springs on a trailer makes it pretty easy. Um, so that's, you know, that gives us, that gives us some options. And I think you can find these pretty affordably, not, you know, this one here, $65. That's way too much. But <laughs> I think you can find them quite a bit cheaper. This is one tenth or one. This would be for a one tenth axle or one tenth vehicle. But what I think we can do, leaf spring to lol. Yes, I know. So this was kind of the the general overall size. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that the, the actual undercarriage of this needs to be that size. Cause you can see on these, that the center chassis is underneath of it. And then the trailer goes over top. So I think we, we have some options. Oh, sorry. Was there, I missed if there was a spammer. Hopefully, uh, you got the spammer taken care of. <laughs> um, if we let's, let's see if we can find that if there's any details on it to my semi front axle, Oh, that's a TLT axle, uh, which is not what we want, but they are the same width, I believe. So to me, a semi front axle width. Good old RC crawler from knuckle face to knuckle face. It's 145 millimeters overall width from front axle to okay. 145 millimeters. That's about perfect. So we're going to keep that information handy and go from there. Let's, let's take and sketch a little bit more on here just with that information. Um, so 145 millimeters. That's barely 
fairly wide. Now from there, you're gonna have your hex, your tire, your wheel, everything. So that actually, that's, I think that would be a pretty decent fit. We'll need to make some concessions. Like if this is gonna be the overall width of the trailer, we'll need to make some concessions and because I think this was, we'll see, did that say, if we're gonna look at kind of going this route, I think this is where we pulled the dimensions off of, but let's see, these are kind of cool looking little trailers. I think they, they'll give us enough opportunities yeah, so this is what we were looking at here. Main body, five foot wide, four foot tall, eight foot long. Overall dimensions, 146 inches, 78 inches wide, 68 inches tall. So I'm just gonna make sure I do a little bit of conversion just to make sure that we were 78 inches wide, so 78 divided by, well, 10 is 7.8 inches, so you take that times 25.4, 198 is the total width. So, overall, oh wait, so long, 78 inches wide. That's considerably wider. Maybe that was just the body width, because that was five feet wide. So five times, 12, 60, so that's six inches times 25.4, 152. So there's, okay, that's how we got this. This is just the main body width. So that's good information. So to fit, I think, I think we're actually gonna be in good shape. I'm just doing a little, kind of this is one of those things that when you're going through a design process, you need, to, to think through these things, to be able to end up with a design that's gonna work for you. So while it might not make the most interesting portion of a video, at least kind of shows you my full design process. Now, the other thing is, is that we need to make sure we put the, uh, duplicate that tab and then go back. So, that axle is quite a ways toward the back. I think that we'll want to replicate the same. Now I'm going to take and draw a rectangle out here just to represent the tire. Let's call it a 4.3 inch tall tire. That way we, and width wise, we'll go like uh, 30 millimeters. I know I keep talking both metric and standard. I don't mean to do that, but. So with the tire there, you can see this needs to probably scoot back a little bit. I think about there's gonna be good. Let's call that, let's just go, whoops. I meant to type 75, not 45. Maybe 80. Let's go to 80 millimeters. So I'm just want to I want to locate the uh, the axle, the tire position. Now we can start basing our framework off of there. I've been neglecting the chat a little bit. Let's uh, check back in there. Your axle line is crooked. I should have that. <laughs> Five times 12 needs a calculator? No, it doesn't. But if I'm gonna just keep doing it all, I can easily type it in. So. This is roughly what I think we're gonna do. So I'm gonna end up with starting a new sketch. This one that we just sketched is all just reference stuff. Now, I want to start with the base of the trailer, the actual framework. So if you, if we're looking at this trailer, even if we just look at this picture, you can see the framework, it's an a frame. So it's going to come underneath of it, but it's not the full width of the trailer. Anyway, we're going to need to make sure we have 
leave room for the axle to, you know, move around. So the total width of the act of the frame is going to be narrower. The tongue that, or, you know, the, the tongue a frame doesn't need to come all the way out to the corner. I just drew it that way when we first did it. And then the actual connection point is another, is another thing. We have to decide how we're going to do that. I think what I'm going to plan on doing is figuring that we're going to use something like a, a rod end that's going to thread in with a stud through the front. Now that way you end up with an actual, a little bit better plastic piece up there than 3D printing. I don't think that a 3D printed, you know, tongue and frame is really the best idea in general. Same for an axle, but if that's how you want to do it, then that's, you know, I think we're still going to be, we're going to be able to make it work. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that when we're designing this frame portion, that we're designing it in multiple pieces so that people with say, uh, in one of the earlier enders that only has a 220 millimeter bed can easily print this still. I don't, I don't want the, the size of your 3d printer to hold you back too much. So I want to make sure that we're in, as inclusive as possible. So for the front 16 millimeters, that's way too much. I don't, I think we'll probably go with like 10 millimeters. I'm going to draw a construction line down the, from the origin out. That way we can just use it as a symmetry line up at the top. There's uh this, this one right up at the top here is the symmetry constraint. So you can click the two lines that you want, then your symmetry line, and that will make sure everything stays equal on there. Like if you, you can drag it, oh, we already defined the width. Otherwise you could drag the width and it would always keep it separated the same distance on each side. Just a nice little thing to have. Um, so there's cheap, complete axles from King Kong RC for like $17. Uh, on eBay, that might be an option, and you know I think we'll we'll make uh, we'll make this as as universal as possible. Now the other thing is is that people should be aware that there's a chance that what we design week one and maybe you guys print might change in week three or something like that. You know I think that this will be a project that we'll work on. You know some this week, maybe some you know this week. I think we're going to just work on this because we'll kind of keep this a little bit shorter. But on other weeks, we may just work on it for a little bit at the end or something like that, just to kind of fill up whatever we want to spend for the rest of the time. And the, it'll just keep progressing that way. This won't be what the entire series revolves around from now on. So if you're not interested in trailers, I, I get it, but we'll, uh, we'll just keep, keep that in mind for now. So I'm going to just put some equal constraints on these things to make sure that they got a weird line in there somewhere. So you go way out there. So we're just going to like I said, this is going to be the chassis portion that's going to lie underneath. Probably, we'll probably take it all the way to the back. Um, that might give us, maybe we'll mount some things to it, something like that. Probably doesn't need to go all the way to the back, but you can see my symmetry lot. All of these things are just going wacky on me. See, constraints are important, people. A Y. So now let's define some of these other dimensions. Say ten. In the world. Uh, 
185, perfect. So I think this is gonna give us a reasonable, what do we want to make this for width? I think we can go wider than 102. Let's go 110 and then make sure that it's even. So we wanna make sure that we've got, we're gonna have clearance for the axle, but we also wanna make sure that we're gonna have somewhere to mount our suspension because we'll want suspension to, to work on this. Uh, how do you plan? How do you pan the view without hitting the pan button, the bottom of the screen? Oh, so you know, like this. If you mean like this, I center click the scroll wheel on my mouse. So that's how you do that. And then if you hit shift on your keyboard and that center button on your mouse, that's how you rotate. So. Yeah, little things like that, you, you know, those are things that I overlook. People may not understand. Great, that's a great, great question. I hope that that helps other people as well, because yeah, if you don't know that, um, you know, v zooming around things, like if you're working on a laptop with a touchpad, that can be very difficult. It it takes away a lot of your, your ability. If you're on a laptop, grab a mouse, just a simple, you know, two button mouse with a scroll wheel, because it'll help you immensely. Um, definitely, definitely worth the investment. So I think this is going to be the general, I'm going to turn off that first sketch just to, we can turn it on when we need it, turn it off when we don't, you know, it'll give us, it'll give us the ideas of what we need. We can kind of see where the body needs to be, blah, blah, blah. So, but at this point, let's add a little bit of reasonable detail. <laughs> Ordering a mouse now. Can you center click to eliminate Manzanita? Yeah, where we were at today, Tony and I, everybody, oh, it was, it was thick. We were in just nasty underbrush. My legs are just cut up. So offsetting a few lines, that'll give us like the outside framework. Of course, we're gonna need some other cross braces and things like that for right now. Oh, I know what else I wanna do. I'm gonna put in a construction line. Let's see, what does, uh, oh, it's saying that those are not parallel. Make sure that that's true first. I wanna make a construction line at 210 millimeters. Well, what's 175, uh, 180 millimeters would be the midpoint, wouldn't it? So 180 millimeters, that's halfway from the nose of the trailer to the, the back of the trailer. That way, I wanna make a, uh, either some sort of overlapping joint or a butt joint right there so that anybody with a smaller bed printer is going to be able to print this without any issue. So let's just do, let's just do, I'm gonna turn this line away from a construction line. Now let's offset it. 10 and we'll do negative 10 as well. Actually, let's do six. 10's a little much. So we're gonna turn those lines back into profile lines rather than construction. What we'll do then is we'll make a body out of this front part and then we'll make a body out of this rear part. New question, um, is this going to be a leaf, uh, B.O. leaf springs? Uh, it could be, I think what we'll do possibly is I will check some leaf springs 
we'll make mounts on this thing for possibly leaf springs and coil springs. I think uh, I'll do like a cantilever arm for not cantilever, but well, kind of cantilever um, for a small leaf or a small coil spring, which would be what I would rather run um, and make it independent suspension, make some, some simple arms. So it's independent. Uh, and that way, that way we, we handle both. I'll do that probably first and then maybe retrofit an option for leaf springs for people who want to go that route and, you know, buy an axle. I think we can do an all printed version with some independent suspension. So now let's just call, let's extrude a body out of this first. Let's go, let's go eight mil tall. We're going to keep this really simple to start with just because we have so much to build on that we don't need to get, don't need to get too crazy. So now I'm doing the second one. And instead of that join there, we're going to go new body. That way these are separate bodies. These are going to be printed separately. And then we're going to have connections through each of them so that they can be bolted together front to back. And we'll have where the, the body bolts onto this thing, we'll have it connect all of it. So it should become one nicely, nicely rigid body when it's all done. I think that will be, let's just, I'll show you what I'm thinking at the moment already. So we're going to make some holes. I'm going to change the visual style to shaded with hidden edges. Now I can see where where everything is supposed to be. We can also, we're going to hit P for project, select the area that we want. Now that brought that in, we can actually turn the visual style back to our normal one. One L for line X to change it to construction. Like you've heard me say a million times that gives us a center line. And then let's just do, turn construction back off. Let's do three screw holes on this. I think that's reasonable because the connections that we're going to have through the body are going to help as well. So I selected the three screw holes by holding control on my keyboard and then selecting all three of those. Then we're going to go up to the top and hit equal. Now all three of them are equal, although the size isn't defined. So if you grab them and move them, they all change still. Now we're going to hit D on our keyboard for dimension, and we're going to make that 3.2 millimeters. That'll be an easy pass through for a three millimeter screw. Now you can see the black one is defined because it's on the center line, center point of that construction line. These outside ones are not because the, they're not black because they're not defined yet. We can just do D for dimension. And 34 is fine. So we're going to dimension both since we don't have any sort of other constraint on there. Selected that. Now we need to select those three profiles and cut through them. So something like that. Now, if you want to get fancy, here's another option for you just for now we cut pass through holes in there. So Technically, since they're both pass through, there's no threads. You would need to put a nut on the backside of your screw to help you with that in your create a sketch on that, that back plane there. Then we go into polygon and select either of these. Um, we'll do inscribed, I believe is what we need. We're going to select the center of that hole. We're going to draw a hexagon, which is the default for a polygon in fusion. So we don't need to change that. But what we're going to do is we've got all three of those selected. We've got all three of those done. I have D for dimension. Now what we're going to make that hex shape is we're going to go like 5.7 uh, millimeters. A normal three millimeter nut is 5.5 millimeters. So we're getting ourselves just a little bit of room and 
I'm going to select the bottom line on all three of these, and then we'll hit equal, and that makes them all the same size. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go hit this horizontal vertical constraint item here at the top, and then we're going to go just click on the bottom line on it, each of them again. Now you've fixed them all into position. Finish the sketch. We're going to select those profiles and we're just going to do inward cut of like just two millimeters is enough. Reason we did that now is you have a little pocket for a three millimeter nut. You can put it in there. You don't have to try and hold it as much. It's not a super important thing. You could do it just as easy, you know, you can do it a different way, but thrill of the trailer, just one more detail you know, or one more CAD item that you can add to the things that you do, you need, you know, you do, you need to know, whatever. Now, being that this is 3D printed, I fully expect that we need to add gusseting in here, or bracing, you know, little things. I don't think that this is going to be something that would like hold up in the end uh, to, to even much use. Um, so some of us actually have a 5.5 ignition wrench. What do you mean ignition wrench? But I have a 5.5 millimeter box end wrench. It's one of my favorite tools. It's a little craftsman one. Yeah, little guy. Teeny tiny little wrench. It's super handy. But not the most, you know, like I said, that's not like a super important detail, but it can be super handy to do in other places, especially where things are just harder to get to. Um, so just remember that maybe in the future, that'll be handy for you. Oh, the cutest of wrenches. <laughs> I have a little pack of points wrenches too. Oh, you guys are actually talking about ignition coils and just, oh, I have a Bic lighter. <laughs> Um, are you going to make a drop down hitch to go with this? Uh, you mean like for the vehicles? That's something we could possibly look at doing, but hopefully I've taught you guys enough in CAD that you're going to jump in here and just design your own drop hitch specifically for your vehicle. But maybe we can help you out. Josh, what do you use that little wrench for? That's just a regular, that's the, that's for an, an M3 lock nut. So like just super hard to reach places it's easier to just like put a nut in there and kind of hold it and get it in there this is super handy to have i use that all the time it's the only box end wrench i have in that toolbox uh to my front axle spring mounts are 77 millimeters approximately thank you for that information phillips off-road let's just measure what do we have inside to inside here we have 90 millimeters so we could easily, let's look at, still wouldn't have helped you with that Orlando. No, nothing on the Orlando was that big. That was the, that, that wrench is way overkill. So what we don't know, what I don't know is, is that center 74 millimeters center line or is that outside, inside, you know, 74. Um, make sure that's symmetric. Um, center to center. Is that front to back or are you talking about from the front eyelet to the rear eyelet? I think the, uh, I honest, I think that's that whole, I think the leaf spring thing is going to come later. I think we're going to design this for independent suspension, all printed at the beginning and then work on possibly adding a, a leaf sprung axle in, in this trailer. So. Let's continue to try and make some progress on this thing. Let's, uh, you 
you know, this gives us a base to work on. Let's go and let's look at, you know, putting the body on this thing just to make that that leap into seeing something that you, you know, you want to see. So we started a new sketch. I thought we had a hundred and it's 150 millimeters look like, and then body length. So body length is another one. We got to look at, you know, we're gonna have to look at how we're going to divide this thing up to make it more easily printable for you guys with, with printers that can't do 245 millimeters. Um, but it's all going to be doable. We're going to make sure that that, that is possible. We're going to make sure that it's a, a fun for all printers project. Horny as shit. Um, I'm going to project that onto the top. I'm just doing this. I'm going to make sure things align. L for line X. So that's going to be the basic shape of, of the box. You know, as you can see here, the, the tire intrudes into it a little bit, but we're going to be able to make that make that happen. So let's, uh, let's add a couple of dimensions to make sure all this stuff is going to be 15 there. I want to make sure that we end up with enough clearance. What does that make that? We're going to 130 look like. Okay. We're going to make, this is going to be a cutout in the floor and then we'll, we'll kind of, this will all kind of blend into, you know, some sort of feature on the inside as well as the fender. So you're not going to see like this odd shape. But so we've got that that area blocked out. Now let's make sure let's mirror that to the other side. We're going to select those lines, mirror line. We're going to draw that grab that center line. So now we have that there. Um, I just got an Ender Five. I love it. I'm printing a snowplow tomorrow. There's no shortage of things to print. Getting a printer is a great idea. If you don't have one yet, you know, I get it. That's another thing that we can do with a lot of this. I think that what I can do is create, well, maybe we'll do that with a couple of parts today. Some of you guys might not have 3D printers and maybe you don't want 3D printers. Maybe you're more of a scratch builder. CAD is still a super powerful thing. So. Tonight, let's take a couple of the parts that we make and I'll show you how to make some 2D drawings or templates out of it so that you can draw something, make yourself a 2D drawing that you can print out and then you can use that as a template to cut out parts that you want. Or maybe you have a 3D printer, but you want a more rigid frame that's gonna go underneath of it. So you wanna cut it out of wood or some you know ABS, quarter inch ABS plastic. That could be a huge, thing for you and you could have a much stronger trailer. So this is going to be the floor of our trailer. Let's go with uh, an eighth of an inch, which is, you know, just over, it's like 3.1 millimeters. Um, but eighth inch material can be super common, at least here in the US. So let's do eighth inch and since you're, if you're 3D printing it, 
it's not a big deal to just have it be this odd 3.1 something millimeters. So floor there. Greetings from Manila, Philippines. Always watch your channel, especially this STL Sunday. Maybe you can do a child's car seat next time. Hmm, that's an interesting one. I miss my old RC trailer. I built it to be insulated and large enough to hold six 12 ounce cans and some food. <laughs> my ex called it a picnic pal. <laughs> that's funny. So let's call this the floor. Now I'm going to grab this window again to show you guys uh, that if we look closely though these things do have they don't have a, a square flat floor they have this you know the rounded shapes and things like that so we're gonna have to make some obvious modifications to make that work properly but we're gonna just keep moving forward with the design work and then we can make that make that happen little by little let's uh let's work on a profile let's work on a side panel i think that continuing to make some big picture progress giving you guys something to to look at and you know maybe it'll help you be more invested into the project as you you know rather than getting into the little details of everything you start working on on those on the big picture stuff and you can start feeling better about it. So, oh, that probably didn't join, huh? So I need to grab that specifications again, the body, how it said the body was four feet tall. So 48 inches, 4.8 inches, 4.8 inches, and it's going to be about 120 millimeters. Uh, 4.8 times 25.4, will it do it in here? 121, 125, close enough. So I'm going to kind of eyeball some shapes here. We're going to put a, a large radius on the front. I'm looking at, at these pictures, you know, this one, for example, that's a pretty good size radius. It's maybe not quite to the halfway point. Honestly, I think what we show there is pretty close. Hopefully you would agree. So we're going to call that one good. And then we need to put a radius on the front radius on the front's pretty small, you know, especially compared to that large top radius. I think maybe a hair smaller than what we show here. Oops. Let's go 15. Some people may feel more comfortable working in, you know, metric. I, I find the metric system to be so much easier. Just it's what I design in, even though we're in the U S I think the metric system is superior in most ways other than temperature. I can't, I've, I've trained myself to, to work in the metric system for design stuff, but, uh, Fahrenheit is still my still how I think. I, I don't have a very good conversion method for Fahrenheit in my head still. Now we need to do this rear portion. So looking at this photo, you can see it's got this tail off, nice radius around there, a little right, larger radius around the bottom. Let's let's throw a few dimensions on this first. Um, I don't want that to go too far up. I'm a 
I'm okay with those dimensions. This is all eyeballed, you know. This is something that if we had a really good side profile, we could bring it in, layer it. But at the same time, this is just, this can be modeled after that, that teardrop, but it can just be our, our trailer at the same time. So, that's too big. 15 again, looks like that works. 15 again there, I like it. Kind of looks, that looks like about like the side panel of one of these, I think. Let's, uh, let's try and get you guys a better, so oh, let's extrude this first. Let's, uh, we're going to have some overlapping right now, but we'll, we'll fix that later. So you can see bodies overlapping incorrectly here, but it's okay. So we have that. I feel like maybe we, uh, we need to shorten up this. Maybe this is a little bit too long. Um, this back slope portion. Maybe we need to we need to pull this corner back a little bit. This portion maybe could even go up just a little bit higher. I think maybe we just made it a little bit too too much too much of a cut. So rather than a hundred, let's go, what's 80 look like? Oof. Oh, I got rid of my uh, constraint here. So we're gonna add another. And we're gonna make sure that this line and this line are collinear. So fix that. Um, 80 mil, ah, the 45 still maybe looks like it works. Maybe 80, I think that looks a little bit closer. So obviously this, this pan, you know, the original pan is too, uh, too intrusive, but let's make some cuts on this side body first. I'm going to cut that wheel opening. So I hit P for, I, we're going to make a sketch on this outside plane, but then we grabbed this inner part, which was that cut that we made on the pan before for our wheel opening based on a 4.3 inch tall tire. Um, you know, if you use 4.19 class nine or class one tire, great, be a good fit for you. Um, so for, let's make, uh, let's look at a reasonable, 4.3 inch. We're going to look at, at a ride height. So L for line, X for construction. We're going to center it in that cutout. It may not exactly match our, uh, our initial, but now we need to look at where we plan to place this. If we look at one of these photos, it looks like the center line of the Axle center line of the axles, you know, comfortably below the body, not a ton, but a little bit. 
Now we're going to need to make sure that we have room for suspension travel and things like that. And our vehicles are a little bit more exaggerated in a lot of ways, but, um, so let's make, let's make some, uh, let's make some decisions. We're going to place the, the tire about there for now. Um, 30 millimeters. I think we'll, we can make that happen. The other thing we can do is if we're going to make this an independent suspension, we can also kind of make it the, uh, the cantilever or the spindle that's going to hold it, you know, work around that shape so that it's not interfering with things as much. Maybe we can get uh, the ride height a little bit lower at times. And right now we're, we're drawing this just so that we can kind of see some clearances. So I'm going to turn hit X to turn that back into a construction, but I want to make the cutout in the body. I think we're going to go with the uh, rectangular style cut and make sure that our angles match with a 120 degree angle. So we need to make sure that there's enough clearance between where the tire is going to be and where the fender is going to be. This is one of those things that could be trial and error as we get things going. Wheel needs to be forward more. It, in this photo, it does look like that. Um, in other photos, it looked like the wheel was quite a bit more rearward. Um, you know, like that photo, it looks more rearward. That one, it looks more forward. You know, there's a good overall photo. You can see these trailers don't have a lot of suspension travel. Um, yeah, so we can move it forward. Um, at the same time, if we move it rearward, it'll kind of be out of our way more. It'll give us a little bit more room for suspension arms and it's an RC trailer. Let's leave it back there. It'll also make it a lot easily, a lot easier for, uh, a lot easier to drive with being a little bit longer. <laughs> Matt's here. Finally, something I can use. He says, uh, huh. I think some of the other things that we'll do, I was Matt, we were saying earlier, we're going to, we'll put some templates out for these for people who are more scratch builders than 3d printers. So that way you could print a template and cut your parts from scratch, or maybe we can do things like build an inner, make, have a secondary piece. That's an inner structure of these that are 3d printed, but then you can, uh, sheet the outside with styrene. That way you have a nicer outside finish, um, but you have something that's easy to construct still. So use technology where it helps you and then make it look even better with, you know, old school, you know, stone age type stuff like styrene. So. So, yeah. With the wheels further back, yeah, the suspension will work a little bit better as well. Now, we don't need to get crazy with the details here yet, but I'd rather look at it with a few radius added rather than... Yeah. Uh, I love combining 3D printing with other building materials. 3D printing is powerful, but combining it with other methods makes it even better. Totally agree. 3D printing is super powerful, but... If you can combine it with other things, you're, you're just that much better off. Um, you know, 3d printed surfaces aren't necessarily, they, they're always, you know, they're always going to have fine lines and things like that. You're either gonna have to take a lot of time to get that out, or you can use materials that are better for that. Easier on my old bones with all this sanding required for 3d printing. I think we could make this pretty easy to, to do, um, you know, to just cut out and styrene. You have a nice framework, 
probably very similar to how these things are actually constructed. These things probably have an inner frame and then they're skinned with aluminum. Uh, basically, we'll try and replicate the same thing. We'll build an inner frame out of 3D printing and you know you guys can skin it with uh, with styrene. Even I could probably do that styrene work. What? So let's mirror, let's mirror some stuff. Let's mirror this side panel or oop, not face body. We're going to mirror that body. No. About the front plane. I think that one is get it onto each side. <laughs> not bloody likely. <laughs> I think even I could do it. You could skin it with thin aluminum too. Oh, that's actually, see, Phil, you know what, Phillips, that's a pretty good idea. We could even, uh, I could, we could design up some of the 3D printed stamping stuff and you could stamp yourself some of these panels to make them look, you know, you could add some detail. Maybe you, you know, stamp things like the window detail and cut it out, put Lexan behind it, but you actually have a nice stamped piece, right? Could you cut styrene with a Bic? Listen, my Bic lighter moment on Friday Night's Live, Friday Night Live build was genius. And I apologize for nothing. Thank you and good night. So I'm going to adjust my visual style, hidden edges. Why is that? Oh, I see what happened there. It didn't, it didn't extrude that it. Some of these edges were, I wanted that, or I want them to interfere for right now. So what I want to do now is I want to modify these areas. So you can see right here, we've got two collide, oops. We've got some colliding bodies going on. I want to modify that floor pan so that they're not colliding. So we're going to start, we're going to sketch on that. I'm going to hit P for project. We're going to select this whole side panel that will give us all of that line work. And now we're going to do, see, now we can just select that, those areas. Why did it not? Didn't like that one back there though. Interesting. Let's see if we grab that surface as well. Eh, now it did it. So we selected those two. We're just going to drag those all the way across. It's only cutting that body, which is good. change our visual style back. Now they're still technically interfering. They're overlapping. This one's overlapping or that one is, but we'll get to that when we get there. No rush. You could get metal looking filament. You can, but it always looks like 3d printing. So, um, Whoa, what happened? I did. How did I not notice when that happened? That was weird. There we go. Now we're back to what we'll call normal. <laughs> Dual axle, right? <laughs> I don't know how that happened. That was just something. Oh, I know. When I fixed that bottom profile. So 
something, something, something. Looking, looking all right. Almost had a double axle trailer. I know. I don't know what my deal was. So let's let's modify. Let's keep modifying the floor. We're gonna make sure that. So I'm going to, we're going to hit P for project and we're going to select a couple of these surfaces. That way we can use them to snap. I just want to make sure that my, my overlapping areas aren't, aren't affected. Show you what I'm doing in just a second. So we selected all that. Now we're going to drag up. And you can see where it's going to be cutting. Now we don't want to cut these side walls at all. So we're going to hit this drop down and we can toggle off. We only want to cut this pan, which is body three right there. So now we can toggle off body four and five. Now those cuts that we're making won't have any effect on those. And now we don't have any more interference. So we got that part. And again, we're going to make sure that we make modifications to any part that's over the size of a, even a basic Ender 3 printer. So nothing's going to be more than 220 millimeters when it's done. Currently, this is 245. We're going to handle that. You'll be able to print this with a very basic printer. I promise. Oops. So I'm going to make, continue to do a couple of things to that pan. We're going to select that outside. We're going to offset. We did an eighth inch. Um, so that's 0.125 inches, negative, flip it towards the inside. We need to save this because it's acting funny. We're going to do, call this Terra drop trailer. So we are and select a couple more. I'm doing this just because I need some lines in places on this sketch so that it uh it gives me some logical breakpoints for extruding the I don't know why it's not there we go. Oh, I see why. Why I'm not working on the sketch that I thought I was. I finished that sketch already. I need to go back and edit that sketch. So we're going to do that. Now I'm going to just do a, do a line to the top of those radius returns. You know, ah, here's another sticking point because of our offset. I do. So I wanted to do those lines so that we could 
Do that. I'm gonna do a new body. That way, I'll show you why. If we did join on that, it would possibly join this pan and the bottom portions of that. So it's easier just to hit new body, then go up and hit combine ourselves, just so that nothing. So now this bottom pan has the curve that we need. And we're starting to get kind of the shape. Now you can see here that the the back of our trailer is is sticking out too far. Um, oh, what this Jose was saying looks like the main body should move back even with the back of the frame. It looks fun. Oh, you were saying the exact same thing. Um, no, that it does need to be adjusted. I initially drew this to the back edge before we added these radius. So probably what I'll do, I drew this, the length of this to what the length of this trailer should be. But now after looking at all of this, what I'll likely do is shorten up the frame rather than lengthening the body. So. And that's gonna be something that we can, we can easily do in here. Let's just go, uh, well, it's, we did 15 millimeter radius. So 185, that turns into 180, 170. Oh, problem with that is that I had some of those dimensions constrained off of the back of that, that trailer. So we actually probably need to mod, we either need to go in and reverse constraints so that I don't have it based off the back of that trailer or um, we can do it an easier way which is just to modify this body probably what we're going to do I agree it looks funny and it bugs me as well fifteen we'll come back in and add the cross brace back in ourselves better now I'm gonna hit a for appearance we're gonna bring in let's see let's go the plastic in this panel and we're gonna throw it on some of these things. That way you can kind of just see what's separate bodies. Uh, I'm going to hit duplicate on a number of these, and then we're going to hit edit, and then I can just change the color. Um, done. Then we can throw that on there. Edit. So while that doesn't make for, you know, lots of uh, reasonable color choices that look good together. It'll give you a, a quick visual difference of what the separate parts are. And the nice thing is if you have things colored like that, then uh, if anything gets uh, joined together by accident at any point, it will join the whole thing and you'll see the color change and you'll instantly be able to see um, you'll instantly be able to see that you, you screwed up. So that's another good reason to, you know, throw an appearance color on some of these bodies, especially when you're dealing with a lot of multi-body uh, designs. Just don't use pink and purple with polka dots. Okay, done deal, sir. You know, we've got, uh, we've got some very basics in here of this type of thing. So what do we want to work on? Do we want to work on the suspension aspect of this a little bit? That seem reasonable. Um, we can work on that or we can kind of work on enclosing this up slightly more first. Um, we'll let you guys make some of, we'll let you guys think about that. Some of this, like I said, we're going to put, I'm just trying to think, I want to give you guys the files that we're working on. Uh, throughout this process, but I want you guys to know that a lot of it's going to change, but it like, 
if for some reason you guys want to have or print or see any of the things that we're doing, I want you to have those. Um, so we're just going to try and be as, as clear about that the whole time. But will the washing machine fit in this? You know, we, that's something we could check a little bit later. Yes. Suspension, suspension first. Okay. I like, I like that you guys are on the same path. Let's, let's, uh, let's look at some things. So I'm thinking a cantilever. I say cantilever. Cantilever is the wrong word, but so I'm going to start a sketch on this, on this frame rail. And actually we're going to make, we're going to make the pivot on this frame rail first. Let's do that. So I want this pivot to be fairly reasonable. I want it to be bearing supported. But yeah. Should our, should our trailer have a bunch of bearings in it? Not if our trailer doesn't have more bearings than a washing machine, we have problems. So we need to shoot for at least seven bearings in this trailer somehow. <laughs> um, I want this to be, I want you guys to be able to build this with parts that you can easily get. I don't want this to cost you a bunch of money if possible. Um, but I want it to be durable. So I think we're still going to base this off of, I, I want to say off of three millimeter hardware in this area still. Um, but that does make bearings a little bit more difficult. Because, you know, 5x11 bearings, that's the standard. Maybe some 5x10s, but 5x11s are the standard bearing. You should have 5x11 bearings. You probably have them in your spares. You probably took them out of something. You know, if you have 5 by, you probably have white bushings from a Tamiya that are 5x10, you know. So, um, I'm going to just put some dimensions in here for now. We're going to have to go back and, and rethink things, but I want I want things in here that are going to allow us to, to think through. So let's see. This is I'm going to draw a circle centered on that pivot point. This is going to be a construction line. So this is basically going to be what is I'm going to call a pivot arm for our trailer. The idea is, is that we're going to have an arm that comes back and holds our axle here. And then we're going to have a tire on that. That tire is going to be up to 4.3 inches in diameter. Okay. So, and that means that then let's define our pivot point real quick, even if we change it. Uh, 15 millimeters there. And uh, three millimeters down. I don't know why. It's not important yet. So this is our tire. We want it to fit comfortably in the wheel well, centered preferably at full stuff, which is about right there. So now we can, let's dimension that arc now. 179 millimeters. Okay. So now you can see our suspension travel is going to do this, right? Because it's going to move on an arc. That seem reasonable to you guys. We need fast city bearings to start making bearing sets for 3d printed Sunday models. I think you're right. <laughs> Use a Yeti junior front end. No, I don't want for one. That's, there's too many parts there that you need to buy. Uh, I don't want, and we're not going to do IFS a arm sideways. We're going to do IFS um, or IFS independent suspension. Um, more like the front of a Volkswagen. 
So, you know, we're going to be able to do this. And the idea will be that in the end, you're going to be able to use a coil spring on either side. Uh, there won't be any dampening, but you'll still have suspension. And I think that we'll make, uh, maybe we'll make buckets to fit multiple sizes of springs. So you can take a, a spring out of maybe an SCX 10 and cut it down if you need to, or whatever it is. Uh, there's lots of things like that, that you could, you could do. Um, and yeah, leaf springs are also an option. We talked about that early in here. Um, I think that we'll design something around. I think that we'll make concessions later for leaf springs either way. Uh, but leaf springs are a good fit for a trailer like this, you know, um, uh, this, the performance of a suspension, the performance of a trailer sucks. So they're, you know, leaf springs are right at home and, you know, you're perfect. You, you, you obviously, if you're driving with a trailer behind your truck, you obviously don't care about performance. So you're probably a fan of leaf springs even. <laughs> okay. Enough talking crap about leaf springs. It's not, don't worry. I'll still do it. But this just gives you guys a, it shows you a method. You know, you, you can start drawing some of these sketches, moving them around, seeing how, how things are going to interact. CAD's so powerful for that. You should use it. Um, you know, draw things, move them like this, see what, see how things are going to act. See, it's like, okay, well, that's where my tire is going to be at full compression. But, you know, at normal driving, then it's, it makes it down here and you can see it's like, oh, that actually pushes things. You know, it does push that thing forward. We have the option of, you know, maybe we move this pivot point further forward. You want, you want more suspension or better suspension. Uh, let's do this. Let's take, Let's take this, let's move this thing up here. Let's put this, let's put this pivot point 15 millimeters in front of that, the junction of the front and rear chassis portions. Now let's delete our constraint of that. Recenter this visually about like that. Now this arc went from 179 to 240. So now, as your wheel and tire travels, it's, it's moving in a flatter arc. We're going to flatten the curve of our trip. I'm not getting into it, but you can see now we've got, you know, as this goes down, it's, it's closer to the center the whole time. And the location of the pivot point, all of that affects all of these things. Um, so yeah, we are, I know we're making a lot of, of this for a trailer, but all of this, this stuff all applies to whatever other project you could be doing, you know, like we're not just talking about a trailer here. We're talking about methods in CAD that you can you can use for your projects of whatever it is you're looking to build. You can mock up a truck visual, you know, virtually in CAD, learn things about it, and then work on fabricating it without 3D printing or anything. You can just learn things about how it's all going to work in here. Am I getting preachy today? I don't mean to be. So <laughs> what? Yes. Normally I'm in here like bouncing the suspension of a truck. Instead, I'm doing it virtually between this tire up and down. So, okay. This is the type of thing that I'm thinking. Of. We're going to have I'm going to change that inner diameter to 3.2 because we're going to have this thing for now. I I'm going to make this thing pivot without a bearing there. Maybe we'll change that. I just want you guys to be able to, I just want you guys to be able to build these things at home with, with the smallest amount of, of outside parts required. I want this to be a, an easy, all of these projects are made to be fun. So this is going to be a join. We're going to make that pivot into, into that. And now 
things like adding this pivot into the frame, that's where all of a sudden it makes, you know, building this frame out of something like metal or wood or plastic more difficult. So, you know, if I'm trying to be conscious of that, maybe what I just did there, maybe we shouldn't, maybe we shouldn't make that, uh, Maybe we should adjust that. Let's edit that sketch. Let's make this. Let's drop this down. Oops, not 11. That's 5.5. Uh, yeah. 5.5. We're going to make it so that that can be a new body. Well, we're going to end up designing a pivot that is a separate component uh, and it can then either be 3D. We'll make it so that it can be 3D printed or or still 3D printed and bolted onto a more rigid frame. Let's see. Uh, I've been in Fusion three different times today, designing and tweaking different things for my current build. It's a great tool. Absolutely. But. The reason that we made that pivot is because not because we just wanted to make the pivot point. We need to start designing what's going to be our, um, our actual arm. What I'm thinking is that I'm going to here's what we're going to do. I know what we're going to do. We're going to draw a sketch on the plane. Then we're going to project that pivot point onto it. And I'm going to do a symmetric ten millimeters each way, new body. Okay, then we can also mirror select a body, which is going to be that one about that center plane. These all these bodies here, technically three separate bodies currently, those are going to turn into one piece. We're going to connect them all. But what we're going to use them as is we're going to use that as our rotation point, we're going to make one big, nice uh, pivot that bolts to the bottom of this thing. Maybe we'll bolt it up through the floor, kind of sandwich it all together. And then that is going to make a nice, strong option for our future arms. Right now, let's start sketching those arms, though. So. We're going to start our own. Start with some, some of this 10.5 for now, a little bit smaller. And then we do need to go back and find what that dimension was out here. I think we said it was 240 millimeters. So that would make that 120 millimeters, um, the radius, 240, instruction line, we're going to do L for line, X for construction. We're going to kind of just define a, an angle for this for now. This angle isn't necessarily that important for right now. Um, it's just going to kind of set things in place. It'll allow us to modify things. Maybe even we can adjust it to see it in different positions if we if we draw this correctly. So one thing we do need here is we're going to have to have like a five point. 
well, I think technically we should make this an 11 millimeter inner. Uh, we definitely need bearings, at least in the stub axles. So we're probably going to come up with something that I find people are going to be able to find easy and cheap. We'll get to that later though. Uh, for now, we're just going to, uh, probably like a spindle off of some sort of two wheel drive buggy in the front because they're super small, easy. They ride on bearings. Uh, we'll source something that people can buy, but we'll, we'll finalize that type of detail later. So we're going to have that, and then we're going to draw lines that connect these surfaces. So now let's make use the tangent constraint to make sure everything connects properly. So do that. Now we're going to select all of those. This is again, not going to be proper yet. Don't worry. We're going to get there. So we're going to make that. We want to make sure we leave a bit of a gap. You know, right now there's no gap on that side. So it's okay. 34 for now is going to, uh, oh, did I make sure that was a new body? I did not new body. Okay. Uh, sorry. I, I know I'm not seeing all this stuff in the, the chat. I'm sure you guys have some great uh, suggestions and, and I'm guess I second the two wheel drive slash front axles. They're $3 new. Yes. Something like that I think is going to be perfect. And I'll find something like that and we'll, we'll modify. I don't have the parts here this week, but you know, we'll get there. So this is the start. Now what we can do is make a sketch here again. Now I'm just going to project that whole thing. Then I'm going to bring a circle out a little bit further. Say 20 is fine. Something like this, and we're just going to kind of extend it out. You know, it's going to give us a surface about like that. Okay, now we've got this great big ugly thing, right? So what I'm going to do is we're going to hide everything else. Now we'll sketch on the bottom here. What we can do is just start kind of hit P for project so we can get some of those surfaces that don't give us lines. It's weird that it didn't give me that back edge. We have to make that connection ourselves. So I'm creating some line work like this. That's going to allow us do some trimming. Well, I either didn't go far enough or Oh, I missed a missed a profile. Oh, and then I need to adjust that 
that sketch x. So that So we turn everything else on. Now, that's a thick arm. Uh, it does, does it need to be that thick? No, like what we're gonna, we're gonna go through and definitely add, you know, maybe we, the other thing is, is that I wanna make sure that this is gonna hold up in 3D printing. And we also need to make sure that we have a place to hold a coil bucket. Um, so some of that, what we'll probably do is end up something like coming in here and you know, rather than, well, before any of that, I'd want to like maybe add a little bit of You know, smooth out some of those transitions first. Too big. Yeah. So do some of that first, kind of smooth some things out. And then I think what we'll, we can do is kind of come in and make some window cuts in there, kind of make it more truss style, but then add a nice big pocket for a coil spring to sit down into. It's you know, stuff like that. All of those are, are features and details that, that we need to add. And then here, you know, some modifications are going to have to get made to make sure that whatever, um, bearings, whatever the bearing spacing needs to be, that needs to get modified. And then there needs to be shoulders put in so that they're, you know, the proper distance apart right now, they're not, you know, this is a huge 11 millimeter barrel through there. Um, you know, and then the other things that we need to look at is like, we're going to have clearance issues with this design because of, of that, you know, currently if I tried to rotate that up anymore, I would end up crashing into this. So what we may have to do is we may have to go to a, like a swooped arm, but you know, that's, this is all, all part of it. So let's, let's go here and instead of those, oh wait, oops, it's earlier than that. So these two lines are the ones that we had parallel. So now let's do this. We're going to go down then back up. Now that's obviously not great for clearance at the same time. You know, you're going to have an arm that hangs down a little bit more. So we could shorten it up and bring it in closer to the tire. We can leave it for, you know, leave it out there for our long travel and flatten that arc. Let's make this, let's make these two lines parallel to each other. And then those two don't have to be. So we're going to, uh, that's 30 degree swept arm and 
Let's go 12. Well, it was supposed to be only the be <laughs> it's the beginning of a teardrop trail. Yes. Oh, this is this is definitely early in this process because this is there's a lot to this. So now you can see. So we added that that bend in there so that as the suspension comes up we're going to have the clearance for our cross brace i think we're going to work on this for just a little bit more before we kind of call this we're going to look at some of the other things that we did So some of what happened here is it, it lost some association to some sorry, Just flex there. Oh, it lost the uh I see what it happen is it actually lost the redefine the sketch plane there got it back so sometimes when you change the shape of something and the plane moves it doesn't know where that plane was so you have to right click and then redefine that's a, a common issue same thing that happened with this one so we're going to right click on it and click redefine sketch plane it's like that So at this point, I think that we're going to have a suspension that's going to move and, and rotate. And we're going to end up with a wheel out here that's going to be reasonable. Does this make sense to you guys so far? I know this is a, a project like this is a bigger project. So there's, a, there's going to be a lot into it. We're going to be thinking about a lot of things at once and just it's none of this is just a super straightforward building a little scale welder or a little this or that it's we're designing an entire thing that's got working suspension it's going to have to have a connection point for a hitch it's going to have to have scale looks we're kind of trying to replicate something that exists all of these different things are going into this one project so uh, you know I understand that it's a lot. And then we're going to try and look at a ton of other little things about this to make it, uh, you know, actually uh, constructible in different ways. I So one thing I want to do is I'm going to, we're going to fix, you know, I cut off the back of the frame. So I want to try and fix that. So... I'm going to, I think we had, what was that? Eight millimeter. So as you can see here, you see how it, when I drag that up, it changes this green color all of a sudden to orange. That's because it's in this join feature right here. If I change that to new body, that goes back to green. And this is still gray. When I had it join, it was turning it this same, you know, peach color, or whatever. But then, well, that's actually kind of weird that it wasn't joining it back. Sometimes it's weird. So that's why it's easier just to go new body, do that, and then use the combine tool up at the top and combine it yourself. So. I think that's uh is there going to be another trailing arm or just or just the one uh yes there will be two um 
you know, if you wanted to wanted to see that, we could easily easily do it. But you know, it's it was so far from this is so far from an actual arm. But if you just want to see it for visualization. So it'll be something like that. We'll have a coil spring bucket that's built into it that goes up maybe into the chassis a little bit. And then, you know, we'll we'll hide it underneath of a bed or a storage thing, you know. It's there's so many things that that I think we're going to be able to to combine it into. You know, maybe we have to look at how it interacts with the width of the chassis. Maybe we need to go back and adjust the width of the chassis slightly. This is going to be a big project. I don't know that these files are at the point right now that we should share them. If you guys want them, we could, but I don't think that it's, I don't think that any of this should be printed right now, if you know what I mean. This is so out of my league, I can't do CAD. Gene, you're wrong. You can do CAD. You don't have to try and draw a, a stupid trail trailer like I'm drawing right here at first. Don't, don't do that, but you can, you can print, you can design something. You can get in there and just throw some lines around. I do it, go in there and just throw some lines around and make a solid and export it and print it. It'll feel good. It'll be cool. You'll be like, I drew this stupid shape that it, I don't know what it is. But I made it and it's a thing. It, it was on my screen and now it's in my hand. That is satisfying. So we're not going to run this one too long. I started late. You know, it, it's uh, what printer are you using? If you go on my website, harleydesigns.com, there's a section you can go to Harley's Garage and then there's a 3D printing thing and it gives you all of the software I use to design, the software I use to slice and, you know, for my 3D printer, the 3D printers that I have at home, the filaments that I use, everything is there on one page. And I'll put that in the description of this video too, just in case, um, you know, but just download this software. It's free. You can get it. It's a little bit confusing to get the free. Like you have to work around through their system, but you basically what you want is a free, uh, you know, a home use copy. I don't know the way to tell you to get it for free, but it's, it's in there. Walk through it, um, get it and just draw something. I'm telling you CAD is so much. It's, it's not as crazy as it seems. And so this project right now, is as a long, you know, if we want to make, let's just do before we go, let's close this thing in. Let's, I know I switched back. Um, we're gonna flip. I'm gonna just, I want to close this thing in just so that, uh, just so that we have just a second. We're going to just expand this Ross body. This is going to be what our, you know, it's going to be the start of our trailer. You know, we're going to have, I guess this would be more like a trailing arm suspension. I keep calling it a cantilever suspension. I would call this a trailing arm suspension. Um, you know, we're going to build some, some springs into it. We're going to make this a functioning trailer with some travel, some decent looks. Um, you're going to be able to hook it up to whatever you're doing. The, let me pull up the, uh, the website again. This is the one that we're looking at. It's called the Terra drop trailer. Um, you know, we'll let's, we'll build a, we'll put a roof rack on it. We'll, you know, you'll be able to put a night customs 
tent on the top, rooftop tent. Um, maybe we'll design up these roto packs for the side of this thing. You know, it's got taillights. Let's put, let's, you know, let's make this thing ready for taillights. Um, a little, what's that little, that little propane bottle on the side? There's another project that we've got coming. Let's do license plate holder. I think, yeah, the whole rear of these things open up and they're going to give us all kinds of stuff we can do. Um, you know, it's, uh, let's see. Hi, I was signing up for the 50,000 giveaway and I'm 14, but it says that you need to be 18. What do I do? Get your parents permission, have them help you. I understand a little bit, but I just got to cover, you know, it's called CYA. <laughs> um, so get, you know, let your parents know the whole deal and anyone who hasn't make sure you're subscribed. We're doing the big giveaway for 50,000 subscribers. I've got a very nice truck we're going to give away. It's going to be a very expensive truck. Um, yeah, a grill, you know, a paper towel holder. Pff, need that. You know, we need to make this little bubble thing on the front. I don't know what's in that. You know, let's do functioning drawers. Let's, we can do all kinds of stuff with this thing. There's... It's going to be good. We got lots and lots of stuff. Cast iron skillet, right? <laughs> it's got, this thing's a, it's got cabinets on the inside. You know, we can make it ready for lights. Uh, you know, there's going to be no shortage of things. Do you ever run cruise control on any of your trail rigs? No, I do not. I don't like that idea. I run too much power to run cruise control. I'm worried that it end up getting away from me. I just want my trailer to be large enough to hold a sandwich. Hmm. Opening doors. Yeah, definitely. The doors will, we'll make the doors opening. We'll make all that stuff function. All of it. Uh, how, how big is a sandwich? Inside to inside, we are 140 millimeters. I mean, 5.5 inch, I think. I think there's, let's see, Alex Cali, let's, um, how big is a slice of Wonder Bread? Gah, they don't have dimensions. Dang it. What are the dimensions of a slice of bread four and a half inches by four and a half inches we're gonna fit your sandwich is safe <laughs> uh the doors can use hinges from uh rc aircraft so i've got several uh dubro makes some hinges as well um do bro hinges hangers do bro hinges yeah they've got these little things um you know 359 for i imagine these are probably four planes that's probably what you're talking about you know but you know, that's all, that's an option. We can also try and make it 3D printable. Heavy do, wow, world's worst photo. What in the world is that? So, we're gonna, this thing's gonna, there's gonna be a lot to this. And that's why I said it's gonna be multi-week, um, but we'll we'll get there. I designed and printed scale hinges and latches for a tailgate of my FJ 45. Yeah. Like we're going to, I think we can make it happen. So I think in the end, we're going to have a, a setup here. That's going to function. It's not going to cost you a lot to build this. Uh, there's going to be a lot of ability there to, you know, to make some things that are 
It's going to add a lot of scale detail. It's going to be able to haul your sandwich. <laughs> I just don't know about getting your sandwich inside. You may have to squish it and just... <laughs> Maybe you should switch to crustables. <laughs> <laughs> Gene Master says he's downloading Fusion 360 now. Do it. Don't and don't worry about that stupid crazy project like we have here. Just start a new blank file. Click the sketch button. Select any plane and draw a square with a circle on the inside and then hit finish. Select that and just drag it up three millimeter and print that. That's like 10 keystrokes. You've made a solid Go over to the left side where it says bodies, drop that down, right click on the body, save as STL, hit OK, call it Gene Masters Funny Square. And then open up your slicing software. Save the trailer because someone just said that. That's a great idea. Thank you, Steve D. So now we're waiting for Cura to open, I think, still. Yes, we're still waiting for Cura to open. Once you have this file, open files, there's Gene Masters Funny Square, and hit print. And then you've designed and made your first thing. Right? And then maybe you need the funny square to have two circles in it next time. Do it again. Make Add another circle. Then start adding some dimensions. Just jump in there and do it. You, you can do it. Oh, there's my Unimog. Uh, this is my UMG 10 file for the, uh, for my long wheelbase UMG 10. It sits, so I've already printed this. Let me switch over to the one that you guys can see me in. So, that sits right back here, and it's what now holds this bed. So now this bed's attached, goes across and braces between, and then there's a carrier bearing in between. And currently I've got all the drive shafts in there, but they're all marked to be cut to length. So, but yeah, so see, now we designed a mount, that whole thing's going, another project that 3D printing makes possible. Very cool travel trailer, big enough for a sandwich if one desires. You may, if you cut it in half, the, the not as good way, you know, just regular in half, not tri triangles are better. But for this one, you may have to cut it in half the other way and then just put it in one slice at a time. Right now, my SCX-10 II, I carry a first aid kit, three spare 2200 milliamp batteries, and some snacks. I'm too lazy to use a tactical hit pack. <laughs> Sweet, I still need someone to print this for me. When it's done, these will be cool. These will be fun. Too many windows open. Whoa, yes. Dude, I love your teaching style. <laughs> Yelling. I yell a lot. So yeah, triangles do pay, taste better. It's a fact, for sure. So that's where we're at. Get a 3D printer, maybe. Think about it next time you're looking to spend some money. My first project was a two and a half inch HD uh, SSD mount for my computer case. The latest project is an RTI ramp, not to score RTI, but to optimize suspension settings. Nice, see, fun. So. Thanks everyone for joining. I really like these live feeds. I like CAD personally. I think it's super powerful and it doesn't have to be 
as intimidating as it appears. I, you know, I, I don't want doing a big project like this to now seem like everything is, is over complicated and crazy. Uh, I just think that it's going to be fun to work through a project like this with you guys and kind of have the, have the input the whole time. And you guys can say what you want to see or don't want to see or what I think that's the fun part. Um, it's, these are fun for me next time. Let's start next time. Let's do this. Um, what we're going to do is we'll find an item from that website, you know, that where to go. It is, uh, yeah, someone said too many windows open, right? So let's find something on the, uh, on the trailer. Let's pick the scale item to do first. We'll start with the scale item, whether it's those roto packs there. Um, you know, maybe it's, uh, the propane tank that was on the side of one of these like that there. Let's pick something like that. We'll start with that. So it's a super simple, easy project to let you guys, we don't have to scare anybody away with an overcomplicated deal. And then we'll get back into the trailer. Let's do that. You might need to make a cat carrier sometimes. Good idea. I bought one and then I bought a second one two weeks later. Yeah. Oh, it's Sookie here. Sookie just pounced at the door, I think. I'm guessing Nicole is playing with the laser pointer and making her jump at the door. <laughs> All right. Thanks as always, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you Monday or Tuesday for the Scanlies update. Maybe, and then I've got other videos through the week coming. Wednesday, live takeover with Matt. Try and get a guest. We'll deal. See you guys next time. Later.